This is Pastor Mike Brunner of Bible Christian Center in Slipper Rock. First of all, I'd like to extend an invitation to you if you're in the Slipper Rock area to come to our service Sunday 1030 at the Slipper Rock Park Building. And also, as you're ready to enter in and, and listen to the Word of God regarding this service, I want to share with something with you I believe will be of great help to you. Everything we do at Abba Christian Center is in the context of intimacy with Jesus Christ. God wants you to know this. He died not just so you could have eternal life, but that His life will become your life. What do I mean by that? 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, He's called you to partake of His glory and virtue of His divine nature. It means that the very faith of God, He, he wants it to be in you. Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 20, the very love of God uh, that caused Him to die for you. He wants that same love to be in you. Romans 5, 5. He wants the very life intrinsic to his own being because you're his literal child. He wants his life glory to God to become your life. He wants his faith to be your faith. His love to be your life. His wisdom be your wisdom. His compassion to be your compassion. You say that's almost too good to be true. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is too good to be true for your mind. That's why he's given you a heart to believe, I trust that with your heart you'll enter into the message today knowing that he died that his life might become your life. Glory to God. We lose oh, your God. Jesus. I have a word that I feel is for someone. You're giving glory to God by doing your best. Worship is not just singing. Worship is not just dancing or listening to good, clean Christian music. It is doing your best. And even in your weakest, when you make mistakes, even by mistake, mistake, or even sometimes when you know you should have done better, the Lord says, I've forgiven you. I have forgiven you already. I want you, I desire for you to enter into my presence. Don't run from me. When you know you've erred, run to me. Don't give up on yourself, because I have not given up on you. I never shall. You're dear to me, precious to me. My blood overshadows, overwhelms you because of my gracious love for you. I'll take care of that error. Don't worry about that. I can take good care of you from now and on into your future. very very strong amen well we do this every sunday but let's do it i'd never get tired of it if you have your bible lifted up if not you can say it say this is my bible i believe it is god almighty in written form and today it will enter my heart my mind my emotions and my body conforming me to the image of jesus christ to the glory of god Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It really is good to see everyone. I tell you, Lord is, mm, Lord is up to something. Amen. amen. How many can just say, really, we need to say amen to that because he is. Amen. Glory to God. We, we've been doing this series on grace and glory. To enter into the glory of God it has to come by grace. It has to come through the spirit of grace. So we said, grace is unmerited favor and it's divine ability. Unmerited favor, we see it in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Divine ability, we see it in 2 Corinthians 12, where Paul's in a time of weakness, and God says, my grace, amen, is sufficient. Hallelujah. And it's only through grace that we enter into glory. Grace is not an excuse for not doing what we should do. It's provision so we can do what we're called to do. Amen? Glory to God. And it causes us to enter in glory. Psalm 84, God gives grace and glory. Philippians 3.10, God says that we've given up everything that we might know him in a very profound way, experience the very power of his resurrection, and then enter into the fellowship of his sufferings, which means just reaching out to a lost and dying world. Amen? And this paradigm we have, it's, it's called see, perceive, receive. And there's different paradigms in the Word of God. You know, Matthew 9.35 you know, says that we teach the Word under preaching, then we preach the Word under manifestation. A lot of people just want to preach, but 
Jesus had that paradigm. He taught. Someone says, what's the difference between teaching and preaching? Teaching is to explain. Preaching is to proclaim. Amen? Teaching is to instruct. Preaching is more motivational to get us to do what we've been taught. Under manifestation. Amen? Under manifestation. We see a paradigm in Mark 3.14. Where Jesus says he called the disciples unto himself to be with him and then to preach the gospel, heal the sick, and cast out demons. But it was first to be with him. Amen? Not to do the work of the ministry, but first to be with him and then to do the work of the ministry. So we're going to look at this first part and uh, see. Go with me to John chapter 3. We talk about the new birth. Uh, A lot of times we don't understand why God... We need to be born again. And in John 3, 3, Jesus said when Nicodemus asked him why I must be, be born again, Jesus says this. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. You can't enter into something you don't see. Amen? And then in John 3, 5, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, that's physical birth and of the spirit, he cannot enter in to the kingdom of God because that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So God's desire is for us to enter in. I mean just to experience Jesus. But you first have to start out by seeing. Amen? Uh, The word of God's given unto us that we might see what's ours. We might see what is ours. Glory to God. And we enter into a place where we start to look at Jesus and not take our eyes off of him. We see through the word of God. We enter in through seeing through the presence of God, through the voice of God, through true discipleship. Glory to Jesus. And the Bible says that the devils blinded the eyes of the unsaved. Because if they would see... Amen, their eyes would be opened unto salvation. Here's the deal. To enter into, you really got to see. And to see, you've got to focus on Jesus. Amen. The devil will do everything he can to get your eyes on something else. Amen. You know, really, he'll get your eyes on this person or that person. It's not about this person or that person. It's about you and Jesus. Amen. He'll try to get your eyes off of Jesus and, and not see her eyes off of the word by saying, you know what, you can't understand the word like somebody else. You know, that's just for this person or that person, but it's not working for you. That's a lie. Amen? God has given you the eyes of your spirit so you can see. Glory to God. The eyes of your spirit so you can see. So it is incredibly important that we understand that what you look at is what you're going to be. Amen? I know that sounds simple, but what you focus on is what you're going to be. The more you see, the more you look at the Word, the more you look at Jesus, the more you're going to see Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What's amazing is that uh, there's so many people that, in all honesty, you can, there's certain things sometimes in our humanness we want to see and don't want to see. Uh, Russ Bixler, the founder of Channel uh, 40 in Pittsburgh, great man of God, he's with the Lord now. He was sharing, uh, I was at church service, he was sharing, he said that he prayed for a little boy, I think he was about nine years old, and the little boy received a dramatic healing, and his life was spared from death. And I believe it was the grandfather. I know this sounds crazy, but he said, I don't, I, I, I'm a dispensationalist, I don't believe Jesus heals anymore. And he said, you know what? I would almost rather that my grandson not have been healed than, than have to enter into this. Why? Well, you know, if you don't want to see certain things, you know what will cause you to enter into a blind spirit? You can enter into a spirit of blindness. You can enter into a spirit of deafness. What's a spirit of deafness? It's when God comes to you and presents himself, and you say, I don't want to hear that. I'll hear salvation, but don't tell me about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. And God presents himself again and again and again. And you can become deaf. Because instead of receiving what God's speaking, you're wanting to receive something else. Perhaps that you're not, you know, uh, 
You don't have to enter in to, to pay a price in a certain way. But God, the key to, is to see. Amen? You can't enter in unless you see. Glory to God. Now, the second is perceive. You know, it is, it's amazing. Uh, Jesus said, you will see, but if you don't enter into perceiving, you still won't be saved. See, it's one thing to say and say, yeah, I believe that's real. But it's another thing to perceive to get you enter into a place where you commit. You know, most of what we do is in the one dimension. But all of us, if we've gone to movies or whatever where something's 3D, how many of you gone to see something three-dimensional? It's different. It's more real, isn't it? I mean, we were at Bush Gardens years ago with our kids, and, you know, at just a, we were watching something in 3D, and it was like, you know, the guy, person's hand on the studio just kind of grabbed you. You know what I'm saying? It was 3D. Now there's 4D. You know what I'm saying? At the pregnancy center, we're, we're, you know, we're working on getting a sonogram machine that is 4D. And I, I, I know some uh, centers that now have 4D. And uh, if you go in and, and see a picture of that baby in 3D, it's like, wow. But if you see it in 4D, there's more saves. Why? Because you entered in to see that baby in a way that you, you, you just couldn't have seen it in, in, the, in, the, in the first dimension. You can go to 1D, to 3D, to 4D. When you enter in the 4D, it's, it's, it's different, man. It is different. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. It causes you to enter into 3D and 4D. Uh, someone, someone says, what, what dimension is God in? He's in like a zillionth D. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Seriously. He's in such a dimension that time doesn't even affect him. And the dimension that he's in, it's like, what is time? He's beyond time. Amen? He's beyond. Amen? It's like someone says, explain Trinity to me. And I say, no, you can't explain Trinity. You just have to believe it. You know, Trinity is not, you know, it's, it's just like, it's just three. One plus one plus one equaling one. I mean, you know, ontologically, how God, you know, you know, my kids were younger asked, you know, when did God come into existence? Well, he always was. Well, that doesn't make sense to your natural mind. Your natural, it really, it is foolish. It's, it's illogical. It's not commonsensical. How can somebody be without ever coming into being? But God always was. Your mind is not equipped <laughs> to enter into that. It's in a dimension that's beyond us. So what do we do? We believe. Amen? But here's the deal. In your spirit, I'll tell you, your spirit is beyond four-dimensional. Glory to God. And as we cultivate our spirit, we'll enter in. So there's a tremendous difference between seeing and perceiving. Glory to God. I mean, it's just, when you perceive, it's amazing. You know, people that are connoisseurs of art or diamonds or whatever, you take somebody that's really into like diamonds. It's like they get excited. They, they get up and look at diamonds every day. And the more they look at it, the more they, they enter into it. And the more they enter into it, the more it becomes like a three-dimensional deal, four-dimensional deal. They see things that the average person can't see. Why? Because they're immersed in seeing and their seeing brought them to perceiving. And they can say, wow. This diamond's worth a million dollars. And you're like, what's the difference between that diamond and that diamond? But see, they see what you can't see. If you're going to enter into Jesus, you, we've got to enter in to perceiving. Glory to God. Because if you just hear, but don't enter into understanding, if you just see, but don't perceive. How many times did, do you read in the Bible, Jesus perceived what they were thinking? Remember when he, in Mark chapter 2, and uh, he's talking about, man, I, I can forgive sins. And it says he perceived in his heart what they were thinking. And they didn't say anything, but he perceived it. Glory to God. And he said, why do you say that I can't forgive sins? To show you that I can't forgive sins, he said to the, you know, the, the, the man that was let down, amen, from the roof, walk and be healed. Glory to God. 
So perception, it's an amazing thing. Proverbs 18 says that the name of the Lord is a strong tire. We can run in and run out of it. When you enter into perception, it's three-dimensional. Man, it's like you can run in and out of the name, and we're going to explain how to get there. Glory to God. And when you perceive, that's when you can receive. A lot of times, we try to get people to receive without enabling the enter in to perception. True, if someone has a five-fold ministry gift, like, like teaching, it'll cause you to enter into perceiving. Glory to God. God will take us into that dimension. Glory to God. And before I enter, we enter in and look at how this works specifically, the counterfeit works just as well. And the sense of it'll bring harm. I'll tell you what, you take pornography, for example. I mean... If nobody ever sees it, they're not going to enter into it. But someone will seed certain images, and then they have a decision. Am I going to look away and throw it away, or am I going to continue to see? Now, I guarantee you, if you continue to look, you will enter into perceiving and seeing it in a way through demonic spirits that will cause you to be not just drawn to it, but be addicted. Addiction is when you go from seeing to perceiving. That's why people start out with marijuana and drugs, and it is a gateway drug. Amen. But marijuana, you can see some things. You enter into higher things from marijuana. I mean, you go to Oxycontin, you go to heroin, you go to fentanyl. Yeah, you'll see, it will cause you to enter into a four-dimensional deal. It will. You'll see things that you never can see in the natural. Unless you're a believer, it'll cause the spiritual 4D is, is infinitely greater. Man, I, I was just ministered to a kid in a college uh, about an hour from here. Really good athlete. Man, he jumped off a bridge because he was in that realm of counterfeit where he thought, man, he was in a video game. He jumped up for real. It's not a video game. But you see, it looks like it. Because you enter into 3D and 4D through the drug. Mm. So the counterfeit, Satan works, again, Satan always has a counterfeit of what God has. Amen? You break the counterfeit through the truth in Jesus' name. Amen? Glory to God. I know this is strong, but amen. All right. So let's look and see how we enter into Let's just give examples. Amen? You can share the gospel with somebody all day long. But you've got to share it through the Holy Ghost. You can share it, and it's just words, but when the Holy Ghost takes what you share, whoo, glory to God, he will cause it to come alive to somebody. He'll bring the conviction of sin because they really don't know Jesus. They might be religious. He'll bring the conviction of righteousness because people don't know their left hand from their right. He'll bring the conviction of judgment. I mean, under the fear of God, because the ruler of this world has been judged. You know, it's one thing to share the gospel. It's another thing to share the gospel, honestly, in a way that causes people to, to perceive. I have a number of friends years ago that ministered with David Wilkerson on the street. And, uh, and, and I, I remember year, when I first, the first year I taught uh, at high school up in central Pennsylvania, in Clearfield, he came to our school and he did a three-day crusade uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the gymnasium. And that's where the gifts of the Spirit come in as well. A guy that became one of my good friends, he was at, he came to the crusade, he was up at the top of the gymnasium, and David stopped in the middle of his preaching, walked through all the people to get to him. He said, you're the biggest drug addict in town, you're living with a woman that's not your wife, and he said, you're about ready to die. The true story. And, and his first name is Bob. And, uh, and he got saved, man. He said, what can I do? <laughs> See, it wasn't just words. It was reality. And, and this man, he became a street preacher. I mean, him, his wife, and kid, good deal, man. What I'm saying is we need, to, we need to enter into a different realm of the Spirit by the Spirit of God. Amen. So there's, a, there's an example, all right? Let's look at other examples. Let's look at the reality of heaven and hell. Mm, Jesus. 
Mostly every one of us believe in heaven and hell in this room. Those watching by TV, most of you do. It's one thing to believe. It's another thing to perceive heaven and hell. You know, we had Howard Pittman here. Man, Kathy and I went out to dinner with him about three, three nights in a row. And man, alive, he, he thought he was saved because he was, went to church and this type of deal. But he was, on, he, he, he was looking down, going to hell. And then he cried out because he knew the Bible really well. He knew every instance in the Bible where someone was raised from the dead. And he saw Jesus. And he said, I, I knew I wasn't saved when, when I saw him. See, there's a difference thinking you're saved when your gauge is other people. But when you see Jesus, now you're perceiving. He looked into the face of Jesus. And he knew he was not saved, not committed to Jesus. Jesus was not the love of his life. He saw hell, he saw heaven. And when he talks to you, it's like, whoa. Uh, how many have ever read that book, 23 Minutes in Hell? That's a powerful book. Man was, like most Christians, believed in hell, believed in heaven. But he didn't perceive it, see? He believed it. He saw it in the Word, he believed it, and that's good. But see, there's 30, 60, and 100 fold and everything. And then God took away his cognizance of being a believer and let him experience 23 minutes in hell. He said in his first 40 years of life, he led three people to Jesus. After tasting hell the first year, I think he led over 3,000 people to Jesus. What was the difference? He knew of heaven and hell. He saw it in the word. But now he entered into perception. He actually experienced uh, uh, and saw the, the torture, the, the darkness, the fire the, of hell for eternity. You know what's amazing? There's people in hell. Once you die, there's judgment. There's, you can't get born again in hell. And he said, there are countless people. He saw, and you're not with, you're in isolation. And there's, you're not with your friends, believe me. You're not having a party in hell. And there's people incessantly saying the sinner's prayer that they were supposed to say during this life. And they say it over and over and over and over again. And it will never be heard. Because it's a poor man the man wants to die. And then the judgment. Wow. See, we need to enter in. You know, how do you enter in? The we need to say, God, I, I believe in heaven and hell. I, God most likely isn't going to give you a, an experience like that. But I'm here to tell you, the word of God, it, when you enter in to true revelation and full revelation, it's like having a vision. We need to cry out and say, take me from believing to perceiving to the point where we just don't share the gospel. We weep when we're sharing the gospel. We act like it's so real that they can sense the flames of hell and the glory of heaven. Someone says, how do you know when you're just seeing and you're perceiving? How do you know when you're watching something 3D or 4D? It's different. It's different. But how do you know when you're just singing a hymn and a church is not on fire and you enter into the glory of God when you worship? You can perceive, amen, when you enter into perception. That's an example, but it's powerful, man. If you want to be a true soul winner, you need to be able to say you've tasted hell through the word of God by the Holy Ghost and you've tasted of heaven. I know that's strong, but see, it make, it, it'll make the difference in your life and in my life. Glory to God. And you, it, you can tell in fruitfulness. Amen? Glory to God. That's strong. Amen? But we need to be challenged. 
If you never get challenged, you know what? Something's not right. Someone said, I want to go to church where I just get edified. That's, you need to be edified at church. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word in the season and out. It says reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. There's edification, there's consolation, and then there's exhortation. You're not going to grow if you don't get exhorted. I don't want to be the person that after another, you know, 40 years leads three people to Jesus. I want to be exhorted that I'm not perceiving fully so I can seek God so I enter into perception. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Don't be shouting me down when I'm teaching good. Amen? Glory to God. Let's, let's keep going. Mm, Jesus. One of the ways you enter into perception is by stepping out in faith. I was at a church a while ago and uh, preaching in a good church. And there's a mongoloid boy in the back. Some of you may have heard this testimony. I'll share it in this context. And he was, I'm really about 300 pounds. IQ could not be measured. I mean, he could only grunt. And the pastor's good guy said, do you want me to take him out, have him out of the service? I said, no, it's okay. And in the middle of the sermon, the Lord said, go ask the pastor for a basin of water and a towel. Go back and wash his feet. And I rebuked that in Jesus' name and said, get away from me, devil. You know what I'm saying? And God would never interrupt such a great sermon that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> well, the more I was disobedient, the more that the sermon fell to the ground. <laughs> and I said, All right. so I asked the pastor for a basin of water and a towel. And I went back and he was in the back of the church, walked back and washed his feet. And I'll tell you, something, a couple things happened. One, if you would have asked me before that experience that I love that, that, that man, he's about 31, I said, of course I love him. If you would have asked me, uh, do you want him to be helped? I would say, why are you even asking me that? Of course I do. See, I was seeing, but not fully perceiving. When I washed his feet, all I can tell you, it's just a greater love took place. Mm, Jesus. When I washed his feet, because of that action, I had a need for his wholeness that I didn't have prior. See, when you step out, you go from one realm to another. See, that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about three dimension, we're talking about going from one realm of the Holy Ghost to another realm of the Holy Ghost. And this is a true story. Uh, he went home. The mother was there and dad wasn't with him. And he went for the, to the bathroom by himself for the first time in 31 years. Wow. His dad saw it. He wasn't a believer. And this is crazy. That was at the morning service. We had a, a night service. I think it started at 7 that Sunday night. And at 6.30... And you can see the church almost from their house. Uh, 6.30, he goes out of the house, grabs his dad, takes him to the car, and points to that church. Now, this kid doesn't know. He couldn't tell you what plus one plus one is. How about that? Brings his dad and mom to church. His dad gets saved that night. Glory to God. I had a word of knowledge for his dad. I said, Lord, shows me you're head of the fire department in this area. I told him that like 10 times. And I said, uh, you're, you spend all your time down there because you, you, the way you're dealing with depression. So I told him like 10 times, you're, I never saw the guy before. And then sometimes the anointing begins to wane and you think to yourself, I really hope he's a member of the fire department. <laughs> to be quite honest with you. He said, yeah, I'm the head of the fire department. It's down here. And he got saved. But what I'm saying is, different times, you have to, by faith, go in for, leave one realm of safety and get out of the boat to enter into another realm under perception. How many know that the 11 apostles on the boat saw that water in one way? Well, when Peter was walking on it, he saw it in another way. Amen? He saw Jesus in a way that they would never see him. Because he got out of the boat. Amen? It's one thing to see Jesus when you're in the boat. It's another thing to see Jesus when you're walking on the water towards him. 
you enter into a different dimension of reality with Jesus. And someone says, yeah, but he sunk. Yeah, and he got lifted up and walked back. What about you? Man, why would you, man, consider him sinking and not walking on the water? Amen? Glory to God. We need to get out of the boat. If you're going to get into different realms of the Holy Ghost, sometimes you've got to get out of the boat. That's why sometimes when you go on a missions trip, you say, yeah, I have a heart for the nations. Man, then you see people dying. And you go from one dimension to another. You know, I, I, this is interesting, isn't it? Someone has a migraine headache and you, you're on the prayer chain. Pray for sister so-and-so. Pray for brother so-and-so. They got a migraine headache. And you say, yeah, and you pray. Because you see the need. You pray. But you're not in perception. And then all of a sudden you get their migraine. And God says, I'm not going to deliver you from the migraine you're experiencing until you get her delivered and you're praying. All of a sudden, you go, Lord, bless sister so-and-so. Jesus! Jesus! Help her, Jesus! Why? Because now you entered in to another dimension of her pain. Mmm, Jesus. That's the way it works. Amen? Yep. Glory to God. It's one thing to pray. It's another thing to pray. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. See, how this is for real. And the reason we're sharing this is because we want to enter into the glory of God, but we need to enter in by wisdom. There are people that love God that never enter into perception in most of the areas that they live in. Because hmm. they've not been taught. Amen? Glory to God. Let's keep going see how far we get. Hmm. One way to enter into a different realm is to experience the miraculous yourself. Sometimes it's being with somebody that has experienced the miraculous. I've shared this different times. Uh, Ricky Skaggs, the famous country music, I really like him. He plays that little mandolin or whatever. And uh, he's a great guy. But he was backslidden, and there was a guy by the name of Mahesh Shavda, minister with Derek Prince a lot of years. He's in, based out of South Carolina. And Mahesh uh, had Ricky go with him to Haiti to lead worship. And, and, and Ricky wasn't walking with God, but he went with him. And uh, first night, there was a girl there. I think she's like 12 years old. And uh, she was blind. And all, she had a milky substance in her eyes. Didn't even have eyes fully. And Mahesh told uh, Ricky, he said, I'm going to put my hands on your eyes. You put your hands on top of my hands. And the fire of God went from Mahesh's hands into her eyes and she could see perfectly and had new eyes. And Ricky experienced the fire and rededicated his life to Jesus right there and went from one dimension to another. Amen. He went from, yeah, I guess I believe to wow, I believe. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We need to be in an atmosphere of the miraculous. Glory to God. Whoo, hallelujah. It'll take you from one dimension to another. Before the service, Brad had a video of David Hogan when being on here. And, you know, we're, we're friends. And he said, I, I always share different things I, I never share. And when I come here, he said, because I can trust you. And he lets us video. He usually doesn't let people videotape him. Sometimes. First time he came here, I knew he didn't want videotaped. So his wife, Debbie, was with him, so I asked her in front of him. That's called wisdom. Amen. She said, sure. He looked at me, and I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And we got him on YouTube, and at that time, he wasn't on YouTube at all. Glory to God. It was years ago. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, Amen. But, you know, but he shared the last time he was here. how uh, He was uh, on a mission trip with his son and his daughter-in-law. And he got a call from his wife, and she was just crying. And uh, well, he called her and said, "Well, how's things going?" She was crying. He said, "She said uh, our grandson died. He got stung hundred times by killer bees while he was mowing, and he's dead as dead can be. I mean, they took all his clothes and tried to do this and put this on and put ointment on him. And and David, and David just said, you know what? Uh, they stay. He could see he had a Skype or whatever it was." And his, his grandson, big kid, he's like 6'3", like 250 pounds, and he's dead, man. He didn't tell his son, didn't tell his daughter-in-law they couldn't handle it. And just started praying over the phone for about half hour, 40 minutes, and he come back to life, man. 
Glory to Jesus. And I was sitting beside, Kathy never sat beside his wife, Debbie, and she's, she's, she's a very unemotional person. And she's just crying and crying. And uh, glory to God. But amen, that's who you want to be around. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, let's keep going. How we enter into this. Amen. amen. Glory to God. You enter in with people like this. That, that you, you need to, you need to, uh, to me, and we're going to be doing a discipleship course just so you're confident you can disciple somebody else. Someone you know, someone you meet, you, know, you just say, you know what, you want more Jesus, I think this will help you. Why don't we just get together for coffee and get in the Word? To me, you should always discipleship down. That means to someone that you can disciple. And disciple is discipled up. means someone that just is, you know, that you can glean some from. Glory to God. And uh, I'm, so a couple of men that mentioned me, one guy is 80 years old, and his name is Joe Rice. And I remember one time we were talking about humility. And again, I saw humility, and I scale one to ten. If you ask me, are you pretty humble? I'd say, yeah, eight plus, you know what I'm saying? And, and Joe was telling me that he uh, pulled into his, you know, the bunch of houses where he lives. And, and he didn't even come close to hitting this little boy in the car, but the mother said he did. And they told it to all the neighbors. And, man, and I'm thinking, well, you know, just rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name and bind it up. And he said, no, that's not what I did, he said. I just prayed for her and said, okay. And he, they told all the neighbors and this and that. And, man, he got ostracized. And he's 80 years old. And I'm thinking, man. And, uh, but the Lord says he's got a higher level of humility than you because he's willing. No, he's right and is be willing to be perceived as wrong. And I said, Lord, all right. <laughs> so I said, help me, Jesus. Help me to enter in to perceiving that reality and entering into it. So I said, Lord, help me to be more like Joe. And he went through this for about six months, and then the people that were uh, abasing him, degrading him, they began to change. They apologized. Well, they just didn't come apologize. It was in the wintertime. They shoveled his walk for him. And then uh, they, they, they came to Jesus. And, and I don't, he doesn't play lottery stuff, but one of their kids uh, was selling raffle tickets, raffles, and he, he bought it just to help the young man. And uh, he won the raffle, a thousand bucks. <laughs> just a blessing. But you see, you want to fellowship with people that can help you grow. Amen? You want to fellowship people that can challenge you. Amen? He challenged me. Really, he challenged me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, to me, this is exciting. Amen? Is there a cost to it? There's always a cost to it. Man, you want to enter into a different realm, meditate on things that will cause you to enter into a different realm. Meditate on the miraculous. Amen? You will become what you meditate on. Meditate on... The sufferings of Jesus, for real. I, I mean, I'm just finishing a book called How Much Should Jesus Suffer? I get so tired of looking at these pictures that on the, Jesus on the cross like he's going on vacation. I had a friend of ours, and, and Jeff's back there, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Dan and McAdoo, and I said, maybe a picture of the real Jesus after he was scourged. It's hard to look at, man. I've showed it here a few times. I have it in my office. He was marred more than any other man. His beard was plucked out. You, he, basically, his face was gone. Seriously, his face was gone. I mean, and when they scourged you, they just didn't hit your back. They hit your stomach. No skin on his back. No skin on his stomach. His entrails are out. His face is gone. Then he tries to carry the cross. He can't. I mean, and, you know, he's on the cross Oh, your entrails are open. Your pure blood, man, every time someone's on the cross back then, you got birds coming at you to, just trying to pick at you because they're drawn by the blood that, that, you're, you know, that you're shedding. The real Jesus. You're going to get, people say, I don't want to do that. Well, guess what? Then you're going to stay in this realm. I've seen the Jesus that's not biblical on the cross. 
You want to go in the other realm, enter into meditating on what's going to take you there. He who knew no sin became sin. What's that mean? That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. I don't think, I think few people know what it entails. I need to know more. I, I, really, I can honestly say that's one of the things that I seek God on more. and It's, it's helped me immeasurably. But we, we've got to enter in whew, mm, to these things if we're going to enter into that other realm. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. We need to enter in to seeing things God's way. You know, God's been convicting me about the faith of God. I preach all the time for years. You know, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the, the, the faith of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. We have faith, faith in God, obviously, but we're to enter into the faith of God. Usually when you say that, people are like, I don't, I don't want to hear that because it's so out of the box. But you know what? If it's so out of the box to you that you don't enter into it, you'll never enter into that dimension of it. It's amazing. People accept readily that you have the love of God, which is amazing. But you tell them, yeah, they have the faith of God. The same faith that was in Jesus is in you. It's not a, the love that's in you that's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost is in a different love than Jesus had. It's not a different love that was in the Father's heart that caused him to send Jesus. Then why would the faith of God in you, Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 20, be a different faith that was in him? You say that, you'll get ostracized. I, people, man, I mean, people, really. But, so I, I've always shared that, and, and it caused me to go higher. But God convicted me. I was just meditating on it. And he said, uh, if you've got my faith in you and you always teach about it, then how come you don't have the results I have? I said, Lord, I, I've seen the blind see. I've seen this. I've seen that and see that. And he said, but are they the results that I had? And I said, no. He said, you know why they're not the results you had that I had? He says, because you're not seeing the faith that I have in fullness. Ooh, little rebuke, amen. And, you know, glory to God. And it's like, okay. And I've been seeing, I've been asking God that I might perceive his faith as never before. And enter in and, and humble myself if, if there's a manifestation. If I'm praying for somebody and I have a different manifestation than him, then I need to go back, amen. And cry out to Jesus and enter in by the Holy Ghost. Amen? That reality being in me and not just seeing it in a certain degree, but seeing it as it is. It's the same thing with the love of God. It's one thing to love somebody. That's another thing to love enough that you'll fast for them to be free in a certain area. Or that you'll tell them something they need to hear when you know that they may leave the church, they, that you might know that they may leave uh, your presence, that they may leave or, and say something bad about you. Jesus did that in John 6. How many preachers do you know that had a big church and Jesus had a big following? Would they that share something that they knew that if they shared it, they would lose 80% of the people. And John says, you don't think Jesus knew that he was going to lose up to 80% of those that followed him? When he said, you need to eat my body and drink my blood? No, he went on to say, I'm talking to you spiritually. Not, they, they, they took it as the, he was telling them to be a cannibal. But it says most, the majority. It was so bad that he turned to Peter and said, you're leaving too? Wow. How many preachers you know would do that? Gideon revival. Get you down to, you know, 10,000 to 300, right? Well, that can't be Jesus. Well, evidently it was. <laughs> Let's see, you know, it's him. Why did he do it? Because he had to get across to these people that they thought they were fully committed to him, but really weren't. And that was the only way to do it. Wow. That's love. See, it's one thing, again, 
you love somebody, I get it. But to what degree do you love them? And again, this isn't under condemnation. It's, go, it's under going higher. Glory to God. So you can be more like Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Thank God for the love you have. Woo, hallelujah. Rejoice in it. But be open to enter in to higher levels. In great, that comes to, but here's the exciting thing. When you enter into perception through the Holy Ghost, and that's the only way it can happen. It's easy to do what God says because, woo, it's so real in the spirit. Glory to God. But yet, decisions, I had somebody uh, a while ago, they said that uh, God's speaking to me about uh, moving to a certain church. And I said, well, if God's told you to do that, do it. If God's told you not to do it, don't think it's more spiritual to do it. But whatever God says, go, you enter into different levels through decisions. Amen? Glory to God. Decisions sometimes aren't the easiest. But decisions will bring you in. It's worth it. Glory to God. It really is worth it. I remember when I was, I was working on a doctorate at Penn State. And I had everything in line. Really. I had a superintendent come to me and said, Get your master's, I did, in counseling. And then I got work on doctorate. He said, get your principalship on the way and, and pick up your doctorate. He said, and he, he, he called three of us into his office. One of the guys was his son. He said to his son, you're going to be the principal at the middle school. We were only like 27. You're going to be the principal at the elementary school. And he told me you're going to be a principal at the high school. So I'm pretty good with discipline. And because uh, everybody's retiring, right? I said, okay. Man, doctorate set up. Jesus is good, amen, everything's fine. And God speaks to me and one day says, uh, you're done with the doctoral deal and you're going into campus ministry by faith. And I said, really? <laughs> I'm saying, I said, really? <laughs> and we had a battle. I mean, we had a battle. And guess who won? Not me. I remember my dad wanted to be with the Lord. He, you know, we were living by faith for real, man. I mean, there was a battle at times. We didn't have enough food to put on the table. And thank God for Kathy. She never complained. Man, there's time you have four kids, and man, you get a bowl of soup for six people. It's really, you got a can of soup for six people, and you got some vegetables. And, you know, we walked it out, so my dad left me a nice house. I said, praise the Lord. I said, we'll rent this out. And then... uh that will pay for our hospitalization and this and that. And again, sometimes Jesus just thinks he's Lord, you know. It really, doesn't it get to you sometimes? And I'm driving down there, you know, paint the house, get things, you know, in order. And he said, give this house to your cousin. I said, really, again. And I, I went through a lot with that one, for real. Because it was not only it was significant as my dad's house. And uh, I, mean, I mean, weeks trying to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? And I even called, I said, if my wife agrees, within 30 seconds, I'll do it. That's my fleece. Praying that she wouldn't. And I said, what do you think about giving this house, this beautiful house, <laughs> this nice house, the house we need for hospitalization, the house we need to feed our kids? And she said, well, give it. <laughs> I don't give <laughs> up Glory to God. But I'm, I'm so glad we gave it to him. Helped their marriage. Blessed us. Glory to God. Later on, someone gave us two houses. Glory to God that we ran it out. Amen. Glory to God. And a very miraculous. They didn't give them to us. We gave this to her, but they, uh, gave, we, we got them for a good price. And God helped us. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to encourage us. God's not here to hurt us. His greatest desire is to take us up. So here's the keys. Seek God, man. Seek God honestly. And to, to, to enter in to perceiving so you can receive. And I tell you what, just like that person looks at a Rembrandt as a connoisseur of, man, just, just get enthralled and, and by the Holy Ghost. Just, just keep looking at Jesus. I told you this when we're at the pregnancy center. I told our counselors from the time we started in 1982. 
We, we got a sonogram machine. They, they get up tight. We got to get this person and get this person not to abort. And I said, you can't do, get them to do it. Only God can do it. All I tell them, I said, just keep bringing them in to look at the picture. The picture's worth a thousand words. Glory to God. Keep looking at Jesus. Woo, through the word, through worship, through, through discipleship, through church. I, I mean, oh man, through praying in the spirit. Keep looking at Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Enter in by action, you know, and, by the, and, and make decisions, amen, that cause you to enter in. The gifts of the Holy Ghost will bring you in. Woo, glory to God. We're going to enter into heavy teaching next week. It's going to be real strong. It's when Jacob uh, wanted to have uh, the different sheep reproduce, and the, he produced by the rods, and it's, it, it's it representing the word of God, the words of our mouth, but most people do not realize he peeled them open. Most people look at the rods, and, and, and it doesn't work. It's because the word of God hasn't been peeled open to really enter into a higher level. But glory to God. I, 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 I tell you, as we get ready to close, I will encourage you. We need to encourage each other and help each other to go to higher levels. And, and, you know, and, and my, and the, the more you see, see, you can see your wife or your husband and, and you say, I love them. But then when the Holy Ghost gives you perception of the glory within them for you, whoo, glory to God, you, you will never have a problem. Amen with adultery. You'll never have a problem with, man, I, I, it's amazing. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. It's amazing. And with your kids, amen, they might be doing well, they might not be doing so well. But when you can perceive who they really are, woo, you're going to win. Because sometimes they don't know who they are. And you can say, I know who you are. And that's what we need to do in the body of Christ. Someone's messing up. Instead of saying, yeah, I knew he wasn't going to last. You know what I'm saying? You look at him and say, you know what? I believe in you as much as I believe in myself, not more. Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because you perceive. You just don't look at them. You perceive their heart. Again, Jesus perceived. Glory to God. Mm. So I, I, as we close, I, I want us, I tell you, there's something with this, man. All I can tell you, every time I humble myself and cry out to Jesus for more, and, and do these things that enter in. And, I, and I'm still growing in this and enter in. It's amazing. I mean, God's been dealing with me about koinonia with the Holy Spirit. As I said, Lord, I have koinonia with the Holy Spirit. I was in a coffee shop just a little bit ago waiting for somebody. And the Father says, you, and, and he said, yeah, you, you have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, but it's not what I need it to be. And I felt like he just... He hit me in the stomach a little bit and rebuked me. And I'm in the coffee shop saying, Lord, what's up with that? Let me enjoy a hot chocolate. You know what I'm saying? But then I saw his face. I saw the Father's heart. You see, he who produces fruit is those that God prunes to produce more. Because those who aren't producing fruit don't want to hear most of the time. But those who are producing fruit are going to be challenged. So you can enter into perception. And I'm starting to see the person as I never saw before. My need for him. And just koinonia that just is kind of out of the box. Koinonia. It's like, wow. Amen. That's the end. Amen. Glory to God. For those watching by television, I, I know this is a strong message. But God is calling the church to grow up, to enter into high places in the spirit. So there can be less and less of us and more and more of Him. And, and if you're wanting that, if you're wanting that, just enter into the prayer that we're going to enter into here. I, I want to encourage us. God's a high place God. He's a high place God. And seeing's good. But perceiving is where it's at. And you perceive on different levels. I just want to, just between you and God, if you, you're saying, God, I, I want to go to perceive it. I, I want to enter in. 
not just to say I believe in heaven and hell, but entering in that that I taste it. And I know of it to the point that I will lay my life down where people will be delivered from hell. And you want to say, God, I got intimacy with you, but I want to have the intimacy that Jesus had. I want to enter into the faith that Jesus had. I want to enter into love that Jesus has. Whatever God's dealing with you, more love, more power. Just tell him that now. It's not just what you do, it's how you do it. Can you just pray this with me to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, cause me to enter in to high realms of your Spirit. So I am not always fighting battles with my flesh. So my spirit is so free and so strong, I can't keep my eyes off of you. I can't keep my eyes off of ministering to the body of Christ. I can't keep my eyes off of the unsaved. Because I've been given your eyes through the high place. Why the sense, Jesus? Scripture says over and over again, I will cause you to walk in the high places. God spoke that to me prophetically. And I really didn't understand what it meant, to be honest with you. I called up three people that helped disciple me. And I said, what's that mean fully? I had an idea, but really didn't. And they just said, you know what? It's really been entering into your spirit reading. Amen. And glory to God and your flesh is just, man, not there. You'll be what you see. I'll just close with this. I know it's getting late. But Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me when I go in the spirit, if you see the chariots of fire. See, here's the deal, guys. Every prophet around knew he left. But nobody entered into perception that they could see him leave. God says, enter into perceiving. Amen. And you'll have that anointing you're crying out for. Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Whoo, glory to God. Amen. I sense Jesus. Just wanted you to close us in prayer. I just had a couple words of knowledge real quick. I just heard the name Larry and I heard the name Nadine. If that means something to someone, come up for prayer. If you just have a need, come up for prayer. You want to help pray, come up. Amen. But just won't you close us in prayer. Uh-oh. Better get this microphone. Otherwise, Kathy will hear about it. Amen. Amen. I perceive. <laughs> Amen. You can close us in prayer and then glory to God. Amen.